So we're very excited to have a very special guest, Mr. Nicholas Mirigali, a good friend of mine. So he is going to take us through one of his, uh, at this point, one of his signature techniques. Can I say that? Is that all right? Yeah, you can mark it well. Though. Yeah, triangle from the mounted position. And you know, I've trained a lot of people over the years, but the amount of pressure that comes out of Nicholas's triangle is extraordinary and extraordinarily painful. So I'm going to sacrifice myself during the filming of this video to be able to present this to everybody. So thank you so much. I appreciate you trying to help the Jiu-Jitsu community, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I pretty much build up a way where I can keep my opponents uh, uh, back flat on the mat when I'm building up on the hook. So what are we going to do? It's pretty simple. Everybody probably know what's on the hook. So I need to get here my hand underneath one, uh, one of my opponent's elbows and then instead of go all the way deep and build up a grip behind the armpit, we're gonna just grab the opponent's neck by posting the fingers around here. So I, I involve his neck with my hand, so coming from the front of the neck to all around. And then once we have this grip, what's gonna be my goal? Pull my elbow out and down. I'm gonna try to pinch my elbow against my opponent's shoulder as tight as I can. So his body at this point is not flat yet, but I'm building up to there. So second thing we're gonna do, even if he has types of frame like this as Brian is doing because he's protecting himself well, it's, it, it doesn't matter at all. So the, the only thing I need to build uh, 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 to get at this underhook is to start fighting against my opponent's wrist. My main goal here is gonna be post on his wrist and then start leaning forward, trying to slide his arm out over his head. So I slide like here and then I start to generate pressure. So first thing I'm gonna do, instead of keep leaning forward and creating more pressure, I'm gonna wear my head with his arm. So I'm gonna pass all the way through like this and then we have right now a situation where the more I lean forward, the more pressure I generate. Why? Because his elbow is split to his head. Once we have arm triangle set up here, Right, so this cross face and arm, arm triangle, when Brian tries to turn sideways, he's probably gonna get by bridging and then we lose the timing for triangle and it's pretty hard to maintain people in control. Once I have his wrist behind my head and neck, when I ask Brian to turn side to side, it's not gonna work because I'm splitting the arm and the head. So once we are there, so my head is gonna make the second main point of the position. So my head is going to be my base. So I need to post my head on the mat and watch the entire situation. As I need to high step over his arm to shoot my triangle, so my head must be on the mat. So I'm already isolating everything here and my opponent is still framing my hips. So it's going to be pretty easy. You guys can see that. I can start high stepping the elbow first and then I can post on his wrist, control his hand against his own chest and then high step again, reach the situation where I can completely mount on him just with one arm inside. So second thing we're gonna do, once we have this position, so if Brian tries to turn side to side, it's gonna be pretty hard because the arm is split from the body. So my work's gonna be post my head on the mat and start sitting up, lifting his head. And even if I lose this arm, at this point doesn't matter anymore because I'm forcing him to sit up. So if he's, if he's sitting up, he doesn't have strength enough to bridge and go side to side. It's pretty easy for me to just extend my leg. And then once I have this leg extension, you guys know probably what to do. We need to lean all the way there, bending the leg, and then building up here some solid triangle where I can lock my figure four by posting my head on the mat and then come back to mount position and then choose what we're gonna do. If we're gonna choke him by dropping the hips on the mat like here, always rolling. If I'm gonna break his arm, rotating his elbow and break like here, or either like weird submissions where we just like push the opponent's arm in wrong directions and we get any sort of uh, kimura or pressure on the elbow. There is a lot of pressure. I mean, I think that I was telling someone in your class as a little bit of a joke, but uh, I think if you take someone who's over 40 who does jiu-jitsu and you put their elbow above their head, they're going to tap. So it's like, even if you're not, you know, even if you don't have a bad shoulder, it's... Uh, there's but there's just, a plan. We want to force the person to have a bad shoulder. Yes, uh, well, that's... We are helping the doctor's community. That's 100% clear yeah. uh, when you do this technique. Um, but yeah, it's just brutal. And I think the other thing that I think probably people could see is I was trying to alleviate some of the pressure and bring my hips up. Uh -huh. But it's not a bridge because we're not connected at the hips anymore. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like you're, all your weight is here. So it's like even when you're on the bottom as you're bridging, you're not able to remove the guy. No, it's not just, at all. It's exhausting and very difficult. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks, Brian. Um, 
So we're gonna include some links down below, some things that Nicholas has been up to, some videos and other things like that. You can check those out and some other stuff that we've been doing. And hopefully this was very helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching. And Nicholas, thanks again. Thank you guys, thanks Brian. Thank you.